right. Welcome, everybody, to the House Committee on Government Operations and Military Affairs. We're here this afternoon um, to hear an introduction, walkthrough, and testimony on uh, Waterbury's charter change bill. So I wanted to see if uh, our distinguished members from Waterbury, we have Representative Stevens is on uh, Zoom, and Representative Wood is here in person. If you want to join us at the table, please, Representative Wood. And I'm here, you're just not gonna see me. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So uh, tell us about your charter change, Bill. <laughs> well, it's not even a charter. Uh, first off, Representative Teresa Wood from Waterbury, um, for the record. Uh, it's not even a change, it's an establishment of a charter. Waterbury has been one of those communities that's never had a charter. Um, and as you can see from the bill, we are proposing a relatively limited charter. Um, and doing that on purpose. And you'll hear from our town manager uh, in a few moments about that. But um, this has been through the voting process that's required and all the public notifications and all of that kind of stuff. And uh, Representative Stevens and I uh, definitely appreciate you um, very much taking this up um, and doing it so early in the session. It's one of these things that, um, sort of can get lost in the shuffle. Um, and we appreciate your attention to this. So um, it's a, a pretty uncomplicated bill from my perspective, at least from what we see and what you see in other bills. <laughs> um, uh, but I can answer any questions that you might have. Uh, so uh, I'm seeing that there's a uh, local option tax. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that you've got sales, meals and alcoholic beverages and rooms. So I think um, that's the- We decided to go for the whole bag. Thing. Yeah. Right. Um, You're gonna do it, you might as well do it is sort of our motto. Um, and and then it, it makes uh, some changes to the sort of, I guess what I would call personnel supervisory structure and uh, hiring process for uh, some key positions within the town that are uh, set out in statute unless a town has a charter that states differently. That's what our charter is doing. <laughs> um, and I see Representative Stevens wants to weigh in. Go ahead, Representative Stevens. Uh, thank you. Thanks, everybody, for taking this up. Um, as a former um, Waterbury Village resident and now a resident of the Edward Farrar Utility District, I just want to point out this is, again, the first time that the town has requested to have a charter. Um, the village used to have a charter, um, subject of many merger conversations over the last 20 years or more. And um, and we did create, with the existing Government Operations Committee at the time, the Edward Farrar Utility District. That's a separate issue. Um, this is a town issue. And... Um, I, I think from my perspective, you know, Teresa has represented what has done, done the introductory best, and I would leave it to um, Tom, our, our, our municipal manager, Tom Lights, to fill us in on this. But this is something that support that was supported greatly by the town in, in the vote last December, and we're just going to ask for your support. Yeah, I guess uh, one framing question before um, we bring up your town minister, if you, um, what was the kind of conversation like around the local option tax? Was it a pretty robust debate or was it something where there was kind of a consensus? I know a lot of towns have had really contentious local option tax debates and others. Like when we did it in St. Albans City, people were like, yeah, of course, we want access to local money, to takes pressure on property tax and trying to get a sense of the flavor of what the discussion was. Well, I will say when the issue has been brought up in the past, um, it has uh, not gotten a great deal of support. Um, and I think that uh, sort of time has changed. Town government and leadership in town government has changed for Waterbury. And uh, you'll, you'll hear from our municipal manager about the aspects of that. But uh, in the public meeting that I went to, it, it was kind of like, um, yeah, we should be doing this. This is, you know, the, the towns around us, uh, you know, we were showing the comparative um, uh, passage of other such uh, local option taxes in 
in uh, other communities um, around the state. And, you know, Waterbury has really uh, sort of transformed itself over the last um, 15 years or so, um, particularly since after Tropical Storm Irene. And uh, it really has become a destination point for uh, folks um, in the tourism industry. Um, we have a big, big uh, foodie kind of uh, mecca in Waterbury, and that's continuing to grow. And uh, we did, after Tropical Storm Irene, our downtown organization uh, conducted a survey of the uh, community um, businesses where they kept track of the zip codes of the customers. And we learned through that process that a, a very high percentage of people who would actually be paying this tax are people from um, out of state, out of region, uh, and it would not be, uh, you know, as detrimental uh, to the local individuals as what might have, what people might have thought. And I think that also previously, um, you know, some of the uh, previous restaurant establishments, um, there's been some change in ownership, and then there's been some uh, more acceptance of it as it has become more the norm. Um, for communities that have a high tourism base. And so um, it, it really met with uh, very little opposition. It, there, wasn't, uh, there wasn't anything like a merger vote as Representative Stevens referred to previously. Um, so it was, um, you know, our, our municipal manager and the select board did a good job of explaining that, uh, what the benefits were for the community and uh, people saw it as, uh, you know, a win-win. Um, for our community. And frankly, I wanted to do it before something else changed in this building that didn't allow it. <laughs> <laughs> we really wanted to do it before the full eclipse. Um, That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's getting close. I know. So um, I think that's that's all I have, unless you have other questions for me, but I think mostly um, our municipal manager will be able to answer some of the specifics if you have other stuff. Any other questions? I'm oh, sorry, taking over your role, Mike. I have to go into other committees because, like, once you get used to running the committee, yeah, I know. Like, um, so, always nice to have two chairs and to have the opportunity to say EFUD. I think uh, we <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate the yes. uh, in all of state and municipal government. <laughs> um, but, any questions from the committee? Thank you so much, Representative, Thank you. Representative Stevens. Uh, Representative Stevens, you're welcome to stick around if you want to hear the testimony inside the Zoom room. I will. Thank you. Excellent. So, Tom, come on up. It's great to see Tom. Uh, I'm a little bit mad at Waterbury for <laughs> having stealing uh, Tom, who <laughs> used to be our finance guru in the city of St. Albans, but you are all lucky to have him. I was going to say, now he's all that and more for the. Yes. Thank you for the record, Tom, <laughs> municipal manager for Waterbury. At the answer any questions. Senator Waters Um, could you tell, do you know how many uh, registered voters there are in Waterbury and how many voted for and against that, this? I don't know the number of registered voters. Um, we have a elected clerk and an appointed clerk, so I'm not necessarily in that uh, in that wheelhouse. Um, the charter vote was um, Roughly two to one for the local option tax, and then the vote pertaining to the manager's authority was was roughly eighty percent in favor. So I'm more popular than a tax. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it was Sorry. pretty overwhelming. That's funny. Thank you. And um, when was the vote? It was very recent, right? It was just in December five, twenty twenty three. Yes, um, it meet, I've been there about a year. Um, my very first meeting of the charter was discussed. It was talked about as a priority by the select board. And after town meeting day, when a select board member changed, it was even more of a priority. So we we essentially spent the spring and summer working on it, hit the pause button for a few months because there was a flood, um, and then kicked it into gear and finalized everything for a fall vote with the hope that if it was passed, um, we would see the revenue in 2025. I'm told by the tax department that if it's passed, signed by the governor, it's two full quarters to enact it. So we were hoping that our 2025 budget, we'd see the actual revenue. That was the intent of getting it done uh, in 2023. Yeah, so I, I think the only question 
that that brings to mind is just with the off election, it wasn't a huge vote turnout. So the percentages were pretty overwhelming, but it was not a, not a, I mean, I, I don't know what the usual vote turnout is by percentage in Waterbury, but. Um, it, it wasn't a bad turnout. It was certainly a busy day, but sure, it was an off cycle special election. But again, we talked about town meeting day and we thought then we essentially miss a year. Right. Now it's a, other communities have gone through the same. Okay. The other folks have other questions. We'll um, have Tucker up to walk us through the words on the page. Representative Stevens, go ahead. It just, I, we're over 3,000 registered voters, I think closer to 3,300. I don't have a definite number, but um, it was again, a, a, you know, a relatively busy day at the at the polls for a December election, certainly. And um, as Tom mentioned, it was really quite overwhelming. Um, the lack of opposition was, um, and the not not even so much a lack of opposition, but the lack of the the the, the amount of support at the public hearing was um, really quite pleasantly different than than these policies have been in the past. But um, people recognize that especially with the town manager position that we needed to modernize. I can say thanks. that. And I am going to take off. I, I need to take off. So thanks so much for considering this. We'll, we'll be in touch. And state of the public hearings, we did not have a single business in Waterbury opposed to at a public hearing. Were proposed. Correct. Any other questions for Mr. Bates? Thank you for joining us, Tom. Appreciate it. And if you've got time to stick around through the walkthrough, I don't know if other questions may come up. It seems pretty straightforward, but you never know. <laughs> I'm going to stay here. Um, why, why don't you uh, switch spots with uh, our legislative council for now, and if we'll invite you back up if we need you. Thank you so much. Every time I say Mr. Anderson, I kind of feel like we're in the matrix. And so... <laughs> Yeah. Good afternoon, Tucker Anderson, Legislative Council. Uh, I had a law school professor who was obsessed with the matrix. Um, and the very first day, very first class for Penn State Law School started with the professor saying, Mr. Anderson, and then proceeding to grill me with the Socratic method for about 10 minutes. So I curse Neo and <laughs> that experience. Sorry to read from <laughs> your 1L days. <laughs> All right, you have in front of you H801, which uh, approves the adoption of the charter, the town of Waterbury, section one, which are used to approves uh, the adoption of the charter as it was passed by the voters on December 5th, 2023. Section two adds the new chapter 159 to title 24 appendix. Uh, there are two sections of the charter. The first allows the imposition of a 1% tax on sales, meals, and al alcoholic beverages by the town select board. Um, this may be something for ways and means, depending on how the policy has changed. But in the past, House Ways and Means would always add a clause that says that it will be collected and administered according to 24 VSA section 138. And that is to ensure, for example, that the tax department can interpret this in a way where they're going to enforce the local option tax the same for the town as it's enforced for all of the municipalities that have a local option tax, including, uh, I believe, as Tom brought up, uh, that 90 days notice must be provided to the Department of Taxes. And following that 90 days notice, the first day of the next quarter is when the local option, option tax will be adopted. <clears throat> Just noting that, again, that was what Ways and Means did in the past when they vetted all those charters. Um, section two, as was brought up, deals with the authority of the municipal manager. It states that the manager shall have authority to hire, appoint, discipline, and remove all town employees subject to the personnel rules that are adopted by the select board of the town. It also gives the manager the authority to um, authorize a department head to hire, appoint, discipline, or remove any employee subject to the manager's discretion and supervision. So delegating some of that hiring and removal authority down to the heads of various departments. 
in the town. Lastly, in that section, the manager um, is allowed, <clears throat> it states that the municipal manager's appointment of a department head shall be approved by the select board. Appointment confirmation is the model we're using. Section three, the bulk of the bill, it's actually some ledge council housekeeping. Uh, as so many charters have been added to Title 24 appendix over the year, we started running out of numbers, and then we started combining numbers and letters. And now with the addition of Waterbury, it was getting to the point where it was going to be out of alphabetical order because there were no more number and letter combinations left. So I had to redesignate everything after Chapter 155A to ensure that it would stay in alphabetical order. Act takes effect on passage. Thank you for your source. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so I guess the our custom has been recently to confirm uh, that the local option tax language is just conforming. So uh, unless there's an objection from Mr. Leitz, I think we should probably have. Um, the language conform before we pass the bill out of here, just so that you know, basic means doesn't have to do an amendment. And then we're for efficiency's sake. Um, I think this was just the language that was adopted by the voters, right? Correct. So, unless there's an objection from the committee, I might and ask the legislative council to just go ahead and do that in an amendment. So, right, and then. Um, on the municipal manager authority, is is that a model that exists in a lot of other towns? I, I don't think I've really seen the confirmation come up in any of the charters that I've worked on recently, but. I don't recall if this is used in other municipal charters. The model itself of giving the municipal manager, manager kind of hiring and firing authority over all of the departments of the town is somewhat common. It's the confirmation that's a little bit unusual. Yes, for purposes just of the heads of departments within the town. Can I try and come in? Why don't I hit all three clauses? So the hiring authority really stems from the planning and zoning positions in town government, which are, there's an awkward process. Those positions are recommended for appointment by the planning commission, confirmed or not confirmed by the select board. And the planning commission the select board did not want to be involved in that process. They've gone through it several times in the past year. They simply want the manager to hire our planning and zoning positions. Um, the second part about the manager's authority and hiring and firing uh, came about, we adopted the new employee handbook this year. The old handbook was dated 1991. The old handbook had the manager hiring every position. And something our council pointed out was that if the manager hires a plow driver and that plow driver is fired, his lateral appeal is to the select board. If the manager um, gives the authority for the public works director to hire a plow driver, the lateral appeal is to the manager. So the select board did not want to be in that chain of command. They remain in it if, if the manager has to hire a fire or discipline a department head. Um, and then in regards to hiring department heads, um, that is language in other charters, most commonly associated with police chiefs and public works directors. Um, in our case, our public works director is shared by e um, And there's also been, um, since I've been here, an ongoing talk about one day having a police department. And so in the end, our conversation essentially said that this boils down to the manager select board relationship. And I had no concerns about bringing a um, department to them for confirmation. Uh, we intentionally made it one sentence. We did not mention in the charter the force of approval. So it could simply be the manager pulls a select board and says, do you have any problem with this position? And it's informal. And it could be that it's a more formal process. Depends on the manager and the select board at the time. Uh, but we felt that it's reasonable to give the select board some oversight of that, um, given how important the documents are. Mr. Anderson, is there something magical about 155 15? Mm -hmm. It's not there yet. I couldn't hear you. It's not exist. Yes. Uh, so 155E is not in the list because there's no 155E at the moment. 
Um, and that is because in the past, um, Betsy Ann would always leave a little bit of room noting when communities might be added to the charter list so that alphabetical order could be maintained, but perhaps her uh, estimates didn't account for the addition of Waterbury at some point. And my question on section three is, do the chapter redesignations, I imagine there aren't a lot of cross references to charters, but are there any cross references to these charters that would also have to be changed? I did do a specific Boolean search in the Vermont statutes annotated LexisNexis database to see if there were cross references to these chapters and there were not. Wow. So if one is found, I can blame the machine. <laughs> that is, uh, and Tucker, you are thorough and <laughs> we deeply appreciate your good work. That is really intense. She made a finger. Okay. Um, okay. Any other questions about any parts of this charter bill? Okay. So I think that what uh, we will do is uh, Representative Byron and I this afternoon will be trying to uh, finalize an agenda for our work next week um, that will try to add this on. Uh, early in the week, I'll give the Ways and Means Committee chair a heads up that there's another local option tax bill uh, likely to come her way. Do you think um, is doing this on Wednesday or something like that enough time to get the amendment to forming that? Right. So we'll kind of shoot for Wednesday. Uh, I'll, I'll put it up for a possible market and vote, but I don't think I don't see any problems at all unless the committee has any flags that I'm not. Pretty straightforward. Right. And, you know, if anybody's dying to report the bill, let me know by next week. <laughs> I'll take it if you want. Great. I appreciate that, Representative Morgan. Madam Clerk. Or were you, <laughs> you on for it? No. Oh. We're just like good China people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that. I mean, I, 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 I will put their names up. up. Somebody's got <laughs> it. I'll just <laughs> sign it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, Clucker. You know, the people have to do it. Well. That would be our short school. Yeah. <laughs> so, I um, don't think we have anything else on our agenda for today. Um, we've got floor at three o'clock. I um, So, a few folks have different uh, bill assignments. So, uh, I was wondering, Representative Nugent, if you would reach out to our contact, uh, the Deputy Secretary on each 140 and just see when we might expect some response on that uh, for planning purposes. Um, I think Representative Waters Evans, you were reaching out on some stuff on a couple of different bills around witnesses. So um, if you get any responses on those, um, please contact me and Representative Byron because we're gonna try and spend a little bit of this time mapping out next week. Uh, but unless anybody needs anything else. Did you, Representative Blaine and I uh, are responding to some uh, questions from Ledge Council about that um, government, accountability. government accountability bill. And then I think once we're, we're going to figure this out right now, and then that should be good to go. So I'm great. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that um, next week we're seeing, you know, new draft language recommendations kind of getting final questions on a couple of these bills. I think we might, um, I wanted to have a conversation with some of our colleagues about um, 794 the Vermont Veterans Home, but that seems relatively straightforward to me and that we could probably move that next week unless I get surprised by feedback we get from people in other committees. Um, so those are some of the things we didn't talk about earlier that I didn't want to surprise anybody as we're putting the agenda together, but if folks have other thoughts, come find us. I think one of the hardest things here is to sort of figure out when are things going to be ready to move. And so uh, appreciate you all taking up different pieces. All right. Well, with that, we'll adjourn and go off live. We'll see you all at the 4-3.